Gorillas are similar to humans sharing DNA of between 95 to 99 percent and they are the next closest mammals to humans after the bonobo and common chimpanzee. In Uganda, they are found in Windy Impenetrable National Park and Magahinga National Park, all areas that have specific vegetation. The recent concluded census in Uganda put the current population at over 400, which was a huge shift from the previous estimate of about 300 in 2006. When we are doing census, we are not actually counting individuals. We are gathering data from the nests. Gorillas, when they are going to sleep at night, uh, they make nests. And so we take materials from those nests, uh, droppings, uh, fecal droppings, we take uh, uh, materi other materials that they live in the nest and then we, 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 we look at those through our, our DNA processes and see the separate individuals. Then we know that, okay, this is a nest, but this is a nest which was used by so many individuals. Now, Uganda is home to nearly half of the world's mountain gorillas that remain in the wild. This distinction has helped the nation's tourism industry. The increase in the population of mountain gorillas in Bwindi, impenetrable national park, is a testimony to the sound natural resource management policies that are being implemented by the Uganda Wildlife Authority. Um, the type of food that they like in the higher altitude, they like to eat bamboo shoots. In the lower altitude, they like to eat various vines. But we found that they tend to like secondary growth. So not so much deep in the forest, but the, the vegetation that is regenerating is what they tend to like. They're not such fruit, so much as fruit eaters, but the Bwindi gorillas eat more fruit than Birunga because Bwindi gorillas are at a lower altitude than Birunga. Because of these stable conditions, the space that is covering the forest is now shrinking by the day. Recently, the Nyakajezi group that had crossed over to Rwanda just returned and has been sighted in the country. And since the gorillas live in groups, they sometimes cross over into the communities in search for food as they go along. And so what we're doing right now is trying to buy off land from the community or if not encourage them to create, to dedicate their land as a buffer zone around the park. Gorillas are often coming out to eat people's bananas, matoke. Uh, they prefer even the stem to the fruit and they create a lot of conflict with the community because for, for many people it's their livelihoods. This follows diseases that have since attacked the wild animals in the past because of the close similarity in the DNA. And gorillas get almost every disease that we get. Um, to date, they've had scabies, which is a skin disease, uh, where mites burrow under the skin and they lose hair and develop white scaly skin. This resulted in the death of an infant gorilla and the rest of the group could only recover with ivermectin treatment. And then we also had it in another group which only could recover with ivermectin treatment and we strongly believe that it came from the community. The wild animals are the biggest tourism earners for the country because many tourists come to see the animals, raking in six million dollars a year. But not all are habituated for the public. Uh, we have not found any reason why we would habituate more. So the demand hasn't reached there. But also we want to keep uh, gorillas the way they are. They are really wild animals and it is not in our interest to habituate uh, many or all the groups. Community conservation efforts are underway and the communities are being sensitized about the benefits of conserving the gorillas. Craig Kadoda, NTV, Ecotalk. Thank you.